although we don't say it, but our work is proving the same thing. As Salih alayhi salatu was salam said to his nation, وَتَتَّخِذُونَ مَصَانِعَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَخْلُدُونَ Are you guys building factories so that you will live forever? The earning that you are making from all of this is as if you want to live forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this man now. He says, وَلَئِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا he says, Allah is giving me, my Lord is giving me all of this wealth. This simply means once I would go back to him, he will give me better than this also. He is not giving you in this world, that's a sign he's not pleased with you. So he's going to punish you in the hereafter. And he's giving me all of this in this life. So that simply means he will give me all of this in the hereafter too. He's pleased with me. He thought this is the sign of Allah's pleasure. His friend told him, don't say that. أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِن تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ مِن نُطْفَةٍ ثُمَّ سَوَّاكَ رَجُلًا Are you neglecting the one who created you out of dust? Then drop of semen. ثُمَّ سَوَّاكَ رَجُلًا perfected you as a man. لَكِنَّهُ وَاللَّهُ رَبِّي Although he did not give me, but I do not worship Allah because he gives me. لَكِنَّهُ وَاللَّهُ رَبِّي Allah is my Lord. I'm not going to associate any partners with Allah. Just because I have less wealth than you, doesn't mean that I will turn away from my deen. Deen has nothing to do with this wealth. And I advise you also, why don't you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ how come when you enter your garden, you don't say, MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah. You should say this. And finally, it's a long story and continues. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأُحُيِّطَ بِثَمَرِهِ Everything was destroyed. فَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا وَهِيَ خَاوِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِهَا وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّي أَحَدَا Now he started feeling sorry for himself and says, I wish I would not have associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he used to say, I have a lot of family members. I have more children than you. He was proud of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, There was no one to help him against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he could not even help himself. That proves that at that point, everyone returns to Allah and has to agree that all the power is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this wealth has nothing to do with it. We were talking about the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina Munawwara. He used to come from the door. The door would enter, would open into the masjid. And I was mentioning many of you, some of you at least may, must have seen that place. There is a distance between the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the mihrab where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stand for leading the salah. If you remember, there are two mihrab over there. One is just beside Riyadhul Jannah. That's the original mihrab exactly at the same place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stand and lead the salah. Up to this day, it's an original place. They did not change that place, which is a distance. And now they have the second mihrab which the imam uses nowadays, which is about 10, 15 rows ahead of that, in front of that. So that mihrab which is beside Riyadhul Jannah is exactly the same place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stand and lead the salah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he would open the door from his home coming into the masjid, Bilal radiyallahu anhu, as soon as he would see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's face, he would start calling the iqamah, sahaba will start making the saf. By the time he's on his place on the saf, all the saf are straight, iqamah have been set, and most of the time he would start the salah. Sometimes he used to look around to make sure that the soft are straight. 
It says in the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for some time he was making sure that our saf is straight because to make it, get us used to it. And after we got used to it, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not always look around to make sure the saf is straight. He would just come and start the salah. Because he knew now we make straight saf anyway. We got used to it. One day as he was about to start the salah, he looked back and he saw one person is little ahead of the saf. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so upset. He started saying to the people, "Let us O people, either make a straight stuff or Allah will break your hearts. If you want to stand straight on your stuff, Allah will never put your hearts together. Make sure that you have straight lines." Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in say, "When we saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam being so upset." He's so angry and he's going around in the saf to make sure no one else is not standing in the proper position in the saf. He said that was the day that we were so scared that we put our feet together making sure that nothing, no one is even a centimeter ahead or back of the saf. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started the salah. And this might be a little thing for us to know. I really don't like to go into the details of a hadith because as you know, we cannot, as we are going into it, we just keep on going further and further. But is it information and is it lessons of hadith anyway? That's the only occasion we find in the hadith when Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa put their feet together. Normally, they were not putting it together. That Sahabi said that was the day that we were so scared of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's going around and he went to that person, he was very upset with that person whose chest was little ahead of the saf. So we were afraid that he might, might find something in our saf also and every person is afraid this is why we stood that way just for that day and that time. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked all the Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'in to close the doors as their doors were opening into the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'in they were so much attached to the masjid that after closing the door they did not feel comfortable. They wanted to have even closer attachment to the masjid. They cannot take it closing the doors. So all of them now, they started opening windows into the masjid. After closing the door, they started opening windows inside the masjid. So at least they can see inside the masjid even when they are sitting home. They will not go through the window into the masjid, of course. But at least they will have that attachment with the masjid. They can keep on seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever he would come, they will jump right in. They will get into the masjid. And they will see the activities of the masjid all day along. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just some time before his death, he asked the sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam, to close all the windows that were opening into the masjid except for one window. There was a special reason for making them close those windows and a special reason for having that window open into the masjid. Insha'Allah, in our next session, we will talk about that special reason why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them to close the windows and why he said to that person, keep your window open. It was a special message for the ummah till the day of judgment. Inshallah, we'll talk about it in our next session. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin wa al-muslimat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to surat al-mustaqeem and give us tawfiq to follow the ways of sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een and the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi wa alayhi wa sallam.